sita meldo de praise the lord e butu salamiane hewani bwana sifiwe bwana sifiwe tena amen um i want to thank uh, senior the senior pastor um reverend aisa kocheng ibrahim reverend ibrahim ocheng and his wife and, and entire leadership of sitam for allowing me to share today this sunday the 29th of may the year of our lord 2022 and so i want now to begin my sharing and those who are controlling the um the presentation please uh, uh put it on now um, my name is james olekiapi and I'm saved. I got saved uh, when I was a young boy in 1978. I was only in Form 1 at Alliance High School. And now I'm in the 60s. And the Lord has been magnificent in every way. And therefore, I want to encourage young people who are here. And I'm a professor too. So, so never think that the gospel message is beyond you. The message of the kingdom of God is for all his creation. And that is what we, we are here to share today. So today, I'm requested to share about the fact that we are both citizens of Kenya, but the fact that we are also citizens of heaven above. It is called the twin identities. And um, may God help us. It's a very broad topic, and I just pray that the Lord will help us to focus ourselves and, and just take a few things that we will take with us to guide us to be an effective body of Christ as we serve in our places of work, in our communities, and in this beautiful country. Please put the next slide. Now that is a picture of Mount Kenya, and you can put the next one also. Uh, beautiful forest. God has given us a very beautiful country. Very beautiful in every way. Beginning from the Indian Ocean, the Blue Sea, all the way to Mount Kenya. 17,000 feet above sea level. To the desert in the north, you have the Chalbi Desert. You have desert in Turkana, and you have even oil in, in Turkana. To the Lake Victoria, the largest freshwater lake in Africa. To the savannas, Masai Mara, where you, at, at any one time, you can see two million wild, wildebeest and all kinds of wildlife. One time, an international magazine took a picture, and the heading was, God's hearts, God's hearts, not, not your hearts, not our cattle, it is God's hearts, the splendor of his creation. So God created this beautiful country for us and therefore, and created us as citizens of Kenya to take care of it. And I want you people to understand how important it is to be a citizen. Those of us who have had opportunity to travel out of the country, when you go to any other country, whether you are going to Europe, whether you are going to Australia, whether you are going to, to, to uh, China, Asia, any country in the world, whether you are going to America, you will not enter until you got through immigration. And as soon as you arrive at immigration, there is a place written for citizens. So if you are an American citizen, you will just go through and they tell you, welcome home. But there's also another place written for European Union. So if you don't belong to European Union, sorry, you will not pass through there. That line is also faster. And then there's a place for all others. So the rest of the world will go through there. And that will be thousands and thousands of people going round the lines until you arrive there. And you give your passport and they ask you, where do you come from? Never mind that you have given your passport. And it says, I'm a Kenyan citizen. 
Finally, they ask you a question, where are you going? Where are you going to stay? What are you doing? But when you also come back home, it is so beautiful. When you arrive and there's a place for Kenya citizens, and when you come there, they tell you, welcome home. Then you realize how wonderful it is to have a place you can call your own home, your country, your beautiful country. But as Kenyan citizens, we have also a lot of messes that we have done to our beautiful country. I remember one time there was fighting in parliament and uh, parliamentarians were fighting at each other. Those of you who remember, they were throwing bottles at each other and there was a very ugly scene and, and, and citizens were complaining. They need the Netizens, those of us who are on social media, we are firing very hard and saying, look at these fellows. But Duale, who was the speaker, no, no, who was the, the leader of the majority, stood up and said, oh yes, we may be bad. In fact, we are messy. But we are a product of the people who elected us. We are a product of the citizens out there. So please don't blame us. Blame the people out there. In other words, he was transferring the responsibility of their mischief, of their, mis of their misbehavior to the rest of us. Continue to the next slide, please. The creation story, God, God had a purpose for creation. And uh, in general, Oh, it doesn't show it there. Let me, it doesn't show the text. So God in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 28, the Bible talks about God creating man and woman, male and female. He created them. And, he, and the business was that we were to subdue, we were to, uh, uh, to be custodians, we were to manage, we were to take dominion over all creation. Everything that was beautiful. But I want you to understand that God did not just put man there and then stay aside. If you remember the Garden of Eden, God put man, created Adam and Eve, but God was also there in fellowship. God was also there walking in the garden. God was with them. It was a place of fellowship. But because we rebelled, because those that were created rebelled, then the fall came. And we not only uh, brought in sin and corruption to ourselves and corruption to our world, we rejected God. The creation rejected the creator. Those that God created rejected him. And that has followed us. I want you to just see a few more slides. That has followed us. Now that is a forest destruction. And there are so many messes all over the world. Right now as I'm talking to you, there is fighting in Ukraine. Uh, and a lot of citizens are being displaced. There is, there, there is shooting in America. Young children were shot in school, 19 young children in kindergarten, and two teachers here in Kenya, every single day, if you open Kenya news, the first four or five items is social strife. It's either a husband and wife killing one another or one killing the other. It is people burn in the house. It is, uh, it is uh, fighting or conflict in Kerio Valley. Or this conflict in Baringo, it, it is negative story upon negative story. And you ask yourself, why God? Why is this happening? It is because sin corrupted. Sin came and corrupted. And the answer to sin is the Lord. Is the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the only way God can return us back to himself. In fact, the whole message of the Bible is return back to God. If you read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, 
the entire message is telling us who have rebelled from God to return back to God. Because we have rebelled, we have left the creator, we have left our God, so God is asking us to return. And the way he did it was very expensive. He put his own son on the cross so that we might be saved, so that we may be reconciled, so that we will have a new relationship. This is Sosiani River. You can see how dirty it is. And uh, you can look at it and say, wow, wow, that is really bad. But we are here at Sitam. We are here. And the Sosan River is just down here. We are a city on the hill. We are a church on the hill. And the Eldoret is just down below us. So who is responsible? May God help us. Let's just continue next. And therefore, because of the great failure of all society, because of sin, because of the corruption of sin, now God has to give us a way out. And I want to propose us today three ways, and I just want to challenge us because I'm going to talk about three major things that we need to think about. The first one is what is called the great commandment. One time Jesus was confronted by the Sadducees and the Pharisees. Those who were religious leaders. And they asked him, teacher, tell us which one is the greatest commandment. And the Lord said, the greatest commandment is you shall, not lo you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your mind, with, with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and the great commandment. Second is, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Sita Meldoret, how much love is in this congregation? How much love is in this place? How much do we, how much fire? How much passion? How much compassion? How much do we touch one another? There may be people here who are hurting. There may be here people who are struggling. There may be families that are, that are striving or even sometimes have nothing to eat. How much do we even know each other? How many, before I came here to just stand here to, to, uh, and, and speak to you today. How many, uh, how many knew me because I've been here like for, uh, for the last three, four years? How many knew me other than maybe before? How, ma how many people do I know myself? And that is very important. It is very important because this, king, this business of the kingdom is not, is not a joyride. It's not something that we just drift and somehow that heavenly place we are dreaming of will just happen. It begins right here. It begins with how we love God with everything that we are, with everything that we have, with all our heart, with all our soul. It means with all our emotions, with all our intentions, with all our purposes, with all our passions, but also with all our thoughts, but more importantly, how we love God with all our energy, our strength, and our own very life. In other words, we are telling God, we want to give you, we surrender to you and give you our life. Because in fact, it is not possible for us to become effective Kenya citizens if we do not love God first. If the love of God is not flowing through us, then it is not possible for us to reach out to other Kenyans. If we don't even love those we, we, who are believers, who are in the household of God, who are citizens of heaven, those we say praise the Lord, if we don't shake them and feel like this is my brother and sister, how is it that you are going to just meet another Kenyan in the street and, and say, I, I, my brother, I love you. You are a wonderful person. Uh, I remember when we, in the, in the 80s, those of you who don't know where Christ the answer came from, there used to be one church called the Nairobi Pentecostal Church. 
and Nairobi Pentecostal Church had a um, right on top of the building was written, the Christ is the answer. That was all. Christ is the answer. And so everybody who was uh, uh, going in a matatu along Valley Road would look at that thing, Christ is the answer. Until one day, one preacher in the same sitam, that time it was in sitam, it was Nairobi Pentecostal Church. And I was there and the preacher said, okay, you people, you always say Christ is the answer. And he asked, what is the question? If he is the answer, to what question? He is the answer to the questions of life. He is the answer to our struggle. He is the answer to the challenges of life. He is the answer to our own very being. He is God. He is our creator. So he is the answer. He must be able to answer his creation. He is the answer. Therefore, when you say Christ is the answer, it is not a job. It is not ceremony. It is not tradition. He is the answer. That is why we say, Lord, I am saved. Lord, I'm born again because he is the answer. And, uh, you know, I used to be in government. I was a permanent secretary, those of you who have forgotten. And um, the other day, President Kibaki died. So I went to see him in parliament. So, and uh, you know, I go through VIP. So I'm allowed. So everybody, all, all Kenyans who are going to see him, doesn't matter who you are. But then now, if, because if police and the army know you, they allow you to go through another gate. And then they tell you, you, you can stand for one minute or two to, 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 to see everybody else. You, if you come, you are just told, Peter, 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 Peter. But when these people come, so I stood there and I look at Kibaki, you know, the body of Kibaki there. Because I looked at him, I sat with him so close many times before. And how he talked, how he behaved, and we all know how he sometimes talked and sometimes he didn't even talk. He showed it by his body language and you knew he meant no or yes. So when I saw him, then I remembered what the, the teacher meant by saying vanity of vanity all is vanity. Brothers and sisters, Christ is the answer. Christ is the answer because when we all reach there, when we all reach there, then all that matters is that Christ is the answer. That is all that will matter. Let's just continue a bit. So the, 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 this commandment, and this is when we talk about the Ten Commandments, the Ten Commandments is basically exactly this one. It's summarized by the Lord. The first four commandments are about our relationship with God. It always begins with God. And then the next six commandments, you know, children uh, uh, obey your parents and then and you do not uh, kill or murder, you do not commit adultery, you do not uh, uh, bear false witness, you do not covet. All of these others are just about the relationship between you and me. And therefore, I want to propose to us today, and I want to propose to you, senior, and all the, men, the pastors, please let us all agonize and pray that the fire of God moves in this place so that there is intentional worship and there is serious engagement between and among one another. We cannot be effective unless we are first effective here. We cannot clean the mess out there unless, first of all, we clean the mess in the house of God. We cannot touch the world there unless we first touch the world in here. May the Lord help us. Um, let's go and look at, so let's, uh, that is the, uh, go to the next thing. I just want to, this is the preamble, because we are talking about citizenship of Kenya and the citizenship of heaven. And I will tell you later that it's actually one and the same thing. 
But let me read the Kenyan constitution. Um, and I want to just uh, remind you a few things because we are talking about citizenship and we are talking about elections. Um, in, 20, in 2007, 2008, after the post-election violence, uh, and then after the Grand Coalition government was formed. You remember all of that? So I remember just after now the government was formed, there were now ministers from the PNU side, and there were also ministers from ODM side, that was Raila's side. So, and, and even us who are PSS, we belong to either one or the other. So everybody knew where they belong. But technocrats like myself, we were supposed to be a little bit more objective, and we were supposed not to, to really take those sides. But one day, uh, a bunch of ministers were going to Siki Backing. And they were both from PNU and, and those, those who caused Kenya to fight. You remember there were two sides. So we were waiting. So when we go into this hall, waiting to talk to Kibakin, these guys were coming in and it's like they have missed each other you know, for a long time and they were doing five highs and they are hugging and say, you, like tu, and they are shaking and they are laughing and they are greeting and they are. While outside, Kenyans are angry and bitter and pained by what has happened. And they have no idea that these people are just one and the same. Please, I want to tell you, I, I know politics much more than most of you here. I know it so well because I ran for president if you forgot. I know it. I know politics. But I'm telling you, the answer is Christ. That is where your focus should be. This is where your focus should be. Don't, don't, get, don't get mixed up. Don't begin to worship politics. Don't begin to have your heartbeat racing up wondering whether it is Raila or Ruto who will win. It doesn't matter who wins. The mess here will remain until Christ comes. Just try to do what you can, but don't try to fix Kenyan politics. Okay? Just be civil about your fellow citizen. Love them because they have no, nothing to do with the mess out there. Do what you can. And this is what we say. Listen, listen, guys. We say this is the preamble to the Kenyan constitution. The very first words in that constitution, it says, we, the people of Kenya, number one, acknowledge the supremacy of God Almighty, of all creation. And then we also say we honor those who have struggled for freedom in our land. But we start with who? Because Christ is? Ha! Huh. Everything begins there. Even to be a good mom, Christ is the answer. To be a good dad, Christ is the answer. Don't do anything outside of God because you will fail. And fail miserably. Even if you want to be a good teacher, first Christ is yeah, go to class when you have Christ in your heart. You will look at those kids not as just funny people. You look at them as God's creation, God's children. And you will love them and appreciate them. And you go beyond teaching and you start counseling them. You start telling them about things of life. Because you, you, your love goes for them. Because Christ is moving in you. Amen? So we say we respect our environment. Do we respect our environment? If we do, one of these days, senior, please organize and mobilize all of that and I will be there. We put on gloves. Let us go there and clean up this river. Let's do something about it. Even plant trees on our own compound. Why not? Why not? We also say we are committed to nurturing, protecting the well-being of individuals, the family, communities, and the nations. Why are families hurting? Why are communities hurting? 
And, and why, why do we you know, talk about tribalism? And, and yet, when we were growing up, we met in school, and we never knew we were tribal. We were just friends. And we went to high school, and we were just friends. My best friends in high school, I was the only Maasai at Alliance High School. So I couldn't just go and look for other Maasai. I had to look for friends among the others. Do you understand? And they are my brothers, they are my friends, up to today. So today, never again sit in your room and you start um, uh, stereotyping other Kenyans. Oh, these people, oh, this, they are people of God. They are made wonderfully and beautifully by the Lord. You must hold yourself and say, Lord, you have made these people. So number one, love, love God and love each other. Let's love each other. Let our love be, be manifest. Let our love move. You moms, uh, you dads, love at home. We want that environment of love. Not to show senior to you, you are behaving well. Behave because you love God. Amen. Next. The second thing I want to talk about is what is in Matthew. We are the salt and the, the salt of the earth and the light of the world. And the Lord was telling us that, you know, when salt loses its test, what do you do with it? Throw it away. The light of the world, the light of the world means it shines like everything around you shines. Let me tell you, you and I have no light of our own. Hatuna muangasa sisi. It's like the moon and the sun. Does the moon have the light? No. The moon reflects the light from? We have no light. We only can reflect the light through the source. And the source is Jesus himself. If the Lord is in us, then he's like the theme says, then that light of the Lord radiates out of us. And then they may see our so good deeds. But light to be light, the light of the world means several things. Number one, it means we must honor God in everything we do, in our places of work, in our home, even how we treat our, what we call our workers, our maids, everything we do, we know that the Lord is the one we honor. It's not because whether other people are seeing you or not, it is because you honor the Lord. That is, that is a witness. We have to be witnesses. Witnesses of the word. But it's no more effective witness than how you live your life. And others see and say, there must be something different with this young man. There must be something different with this young woman. There must be something different with this man or this woman. Because the light of Christ is shining forth. It also means we represent Christ here well. We are Christ's ambassadors, okay? Now, when the president appoints ambassadors to go out of the country, when they go there, and those of you who know, you will put your very best because you are there representing the entire Republic of Kenya. And when you go there, uh, uh, senior, if they appoint you to be an ambassador, suddenly you earn the title, Excellency. And then you are Excellency. Because you are representing the excellencies of your nation. Here on earth, brothers and sisters, we represent the excellencies of our, our Christ. The excellencies of his name, the lion of the tribe of Judah, oh, the great I am, oh, the, 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 huh, the lamb, the lamb of God that was slain for us, meek, humble, but because of that salvation came to us. We represent his excellencies. One day I was a peer in medical, and a guy wanted to bribe me so that. Uh, uh, I can get something through. And I had prayed to God because I was told you are going to Mafia House. Mafia House is a, blade of, of a place of bad people. 
And I say, God, protect me. If my salary is not enough, nothing would be enough. Please, do not allow me to go and, and get into the mud. I just prayed. I didn't even know why I was praying. And when I was in my office, this guy came and he said that, you know, Buena P.S., I just wanted to come and meet you. And um, I'm just going to, I just, uh, and then we chatted, we chatted, and then, and then, then he removed a very big envelope, huge. Maybe me and Billy, me a tattoo even. Thousands. Say, Buena P.S., I, I just wanted uh, to buy you lunch. I just wanted to buy you lunch. And um, you know, do you know that small voice that you always hear inside you? The one that never misses? It tells you, don't even go there. It was so clear, don't even dare go there. And I told him, please put it back. I have never seen a man who was so huge Becoming so small. Then when he left, he went out. Um, and, uh, two days later, a friend of mine came to me and said, Prof, P.S. I asked, it was a lady, I said, why? Why do you say so? She said, that man who came to bring you money was Cutting treated money. And outside, NS, NIS officers were waiting for you to take the money. And then they will come in and get hold of you. And they will go and, and prove that you have taken corruption money. Wow. Can you now imagine a like yappy drug in the streets, you know? This guy, hey, this guy who is born again here. Uh -huh. Can you imagine the shame and embarrassment? But listen, brothers and sisters, the greater tragedy is not the shame that I would have gotten if I was caught. The greater tragedy is, suppose I knew I wouldn't be caught, would I have taken it? Because integrity, listen, is what you refuse to do even when no one is looking at you. Because God in heaven is looking and he say, I'm not going to touch it. So people come and put good offers on you and you, and you, are, and, and you are, and yourself, you get drawn to, 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 by temptation to want to, but, but something tells you, no, you don't, don't go there. And that's what integrity is. So when we keep saying, Oh, you know, these politicians are corrupt. It, suppose you are the one, suppose you are appointed minister today and you are in the ministry and you are in charge of billions and you have been poor, you have been struggling. There is no money in your account and you can get 10%. And 10% it's clean, it's called clean money. Clean because, well, you have not really done anything. You have just gotten 10%. Okay, so you can always justify. Suppose you can do it. What will you do? Brothers and sisters, next time you see it happening, go on your knees. Because when you go to a place of power, the line between insanity and insanity is so thin. You wouldn't even know when you have gone the other way. Except that the Lord causes you to stand, you will fall even without knowing. So we are children of God and we must allow our light to shine be forth before men. We must represent the excellencies of our God. We must be conscious. Mahatma Gandhi said, I like the, I like the Christ, but I don't like the Christians. I like Christ because Christ was good to everyone, even those who didn't believe in him. He was, he, was, he was truly man, yet God. He was truly man, yet without sin. Why did he say he doesn't like his Christians? Because he realized Christians 
were mostly hypocrites. Wana pretend sana. Wana zama mimi ni mkriso, ni meokoka, naenda mbiguni. Which heaven? If God is to come today, if that trumpet is blown now when we are right here, will, you go to, will, will we go to heaven? Ask yourself, what did you do the last one week? It is not this Sunday and then next Sunday we come back and repeat the same thing. Worship is everything from Monday to Sunday, Monday to Sunday, every minute, every hour, 24-7, we are walking with the Lord. And we must, you are praying and thanking God. It doesn't mean you can't laugh. It doesn't mean you can't joke. It, can't, it doesn't mean you cannot chat. No, you, it doesn't even mean you cannot Google. It doesn't even mean you cannot talk about politics. You, we talk about politics. My wife and I argue all the time. But it is not, it, it is, it's a side issue. Amen? Amen. Let me go to the third issue. We are to be the light of the world. We are to shine forth. We are to intensify that light. But we cannot be the light of the world because we have no light to give to anyone except the light of Christ that is within us. So let, let that light shine forth before. We are also the bride of Christ. And this is really where I'm going to stop. We are the bride of Christ. You remember the parable in Matthew there's the parable of the ten virgins. You remember the story? In Matthew 25, you can read it later. Matthew 25, uh, 1, I think, to 13. Verse 1 to 13. And, the, and the, Jesus was telling a parable to his disciples and saying, the, then, he said, then, 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 or at that time, the kingdom of God shall be like... Um, Ten, like ten virgins. Five had enough oil. I mean, they, these ladies prepared themselves and they are waiting for the bridegroom to come. So they had oil, their lamps. Five of them had enough oil. They filled up and they have extra supply. And five did not have enough. So um, they waited and waited for the lamp until it got night and they got to sleep. And then finally the trumpet blew and the lamp was coming uh, and, and they were to wake up. And the, the ones who had their uh, lamps full and had enough oil, their lights were shining and they were ready to, to, to receive and welcome the bridegroom. But the five that were not that did not have, the, the, the Bible calls them the foolish. Five wise and five foolish. The five foolish a bridesmaid or, or virgins were asking for the answer and say, please give us extra oil so that our lamp can also burn. And the other say, sorry, we only have enough for ourselves. Please, you can just go and buy extra oil for your lamps. And they rush out to go and buy extra oil for, uh, for their lamps. And when they come back, the, the, the bridegroom had already come in and the marriage was consummated and they were too late. And they say that it is the coming of the Lord. The coming of the Lord will not exactly find all of us prepared. The coming of the Lord might find some of us not ready at all. And I just want to read with us. Let's just read together this. Let us be glad. Can we just read them? Uh, uh, the Revelation 9, 7, 8. Let's just read the Revelation to get that verse there together. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his wife has made herself ready. Verse 9 says, Then he said to me, Write, blessed are those called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Amen. Ah, amen. The marriage supper of the Lamb. When finally, when finally, because, you know, it is good to be good citizens. Okay? And I told you that we have to be very good citizens and very responsible. But that is only possible because our hearts have been worked on and worked on and worked on 
And therefore, we are able to see Christ even in our soil. We are able to see Christ even in our gardens. We are able to see Christ in, 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 in cleaning our rivers. We see Christ everywhere. All right? But at the same time, we must be prepared for the kingdom that is coming. The kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is nigh. You know, and they never told you, they, told, they don't tell when. They, Jesus said nobody knows the hour nor, nor you know, the day nor the hour. Only the Father knows. All we need to do is to be a bride as a body of Christ, as a church corporate, and individually, we must prepare for the coming of the Lord. We must prepare and prepare well. And that means we must flow in the spirit of God. That, let, let, how do you prepare? Let's look at the next uh, slide. We must prepare. Brothers and sisters, we must prepare. We must be a church that is Sitam is, is known all over Kenya because they say it's a place where they teach the word. We must teach the word in and out of season. And we must be fervent in prayers. Fervent in prayers. And we must be committed. Let's stop this lukewarm thing. The Bible says, I wish that you are, you are hot or you are cold. But because you are lukewarm, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. We don't want to be there. We want to be hot for Jesus. We want to be hot. Huh? Hot. Young people who are listening to me, I was a young lad those years. And my wife here, you can see we are growing older now. And we are still strong saying, praise the Lord. Amen. And if the Lord comes today, ha, we are ready to go with him. Because we have been working on it for the last 40 years plus. Yeah, when you get saved, you don't backslide. You, you just, one degree, whether you get a degree or you don't get a degree, whether you get a big job or you don't get a big job, you get the Lord, that's everything you have. Because Christ is the answer. So, in the book of Ephesians, the, you know, the, the Apostle Paul unfolds this topic more and saying, and actually it tells us husbands, uh, and says, husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved also the church and himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of the water by the word, that he might present her to himself, glorious church, not having any spot, wrinkle, or any such thing, but that she should be holy without blemish. First of all, there are two things. And uh, Elsewhere below that, it says, wives, submit to your husband. Submission does not mean you are under. No, no, no. It doesn't mean you are under. Go read about it more. It doesn't mean you are under. We are, we are actually equal. We play different roles. But can you imagine which is, which is, which, who was given a bigger responsibility? The one who was told just submit or the one who was told love your wife? Man, do you love your wives? And it doesn't mean that, it doesn't just mean that emotional attraction. It means sacrificial love. Like Jesus sacrificed himself for, for his bride, the church. It means you are willing to, even to die for her, defending her, protecting her, secure, uh, being there with her in and out of season. For bad or for good, we, need to, we, must, we must love them. And you know, these things have been taught before. They are not new. I'm not telling you things you don't already know. You know them. But we always need to remind ourselves that these are the essential pillars of the gospel message. These are the essential pillars of the church. So I just want to ask us that we need to prepare we need to prepare as citizens. We need to do the best we can. We need to prepare as a church and do what it is we can do for the Lord is coming and must find a ready church. Let's read uh, one last uh, slide so that I conclude. Um... The, 
Micah is one of the minor prophets. The nation of Israel was going through tough times just before the exile. And before the exile, uh, you know, the children of Israel were taken into captivity to, to Babylon. And, and before they were taken, there was a lot of corruption. There was a lot of um, idolatry in the land. There was a lot of greed. Very, the very things that we see even in our society today and in the world today. The, the reason, for example, there is shooting in America almost every other time is because there is a small, there is a huge lobby, powerful lobby called the, the, the National Something Rifle Association that will not allow anybody to regulate the use of guns. And therefore, everybody in America carries a gun if you want. You can even buy three or four and keep them. And, and, and that is a weakness of, because of greed. And that is what happens even for us here if we don't want. But in that time, that was happening. So the, the, the prophet was really warning the children of Israel that you people... You, you are oppressing the poor. You are unjust and you are corrupt. And you are skinning the lives of, of, of the poor people. And he spoke very harsh words. But towards the end, he gave them hope. He said, ha, ah, even though you will go to um, captivity, you will be restored. And he was giving them a message of hope and saying, listen, there is something God requires of us to do. And that is the message I want to give us today. Kenyan citizen, there's something God requires of us to do. One is to do justly. Say, so what does the Lord require of you? To do justly. Can we say that together? To do justly. Number two, what does the Lord require of you? To love mercy. To show mercy, to show compassion to those that are less fortunate than ourselves, to those we live around with who are struggling, that we can reach even in small ways. Sometimes a student comes to my office at the University of Eldoret, and the poor fellow has not eaten for one week, and he comes to me and says, Sir, uh, and he comes with a little book, and I am supposed to write to commit that I'm going to give you something. And you look at that young person or lady or young boy and he said, this is a desperate case. It doesn't even warrant any commitment anymore. If I have a thousand or two, I will remove it and give to that person. And you know what? I have fed that child for two weeks, almost three weeks, because they eat only 100 shillings a day. 100 shillings a day. 100 shillings, 50 for breakfast, 20 for breakfast, 30 buying something around there, 100 shillings a day. And that is happening around us. Are there people here, you people here, can you not afford, you know, how many of you can afford 1,000 shillings and you make a difference in the life of a young child in the town? Or, or a difference in the life of a student in the university. It may be in medical, it may be in annex, it may be, the needs are there because the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Look at what God has put in your hands and share what you have, but we must show compassion and show mercy. Finally, we must walk humbly before the Lord. We must incline our hearts towards the Lord. We must love God with all we are. We must exalt the excellencies of his name. We must represent him well. And, and always know the answer to the world problem is not what we can do. It is to present them a Christ who died for us, resurrected, and preparing his church for his second coming. May the Lord bless you and may he enrich you. Amen and amen.